185. Find the Fourier series for this function here. You're asked to determine the value that the Fourier series converges to at these points. Sketch the graph of the function to which the Fourier series converges to on this interval. And use the value x equals pi on 2 to formulate some um, value of a infinite series. Okay, so who's done 185? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, it's a good one. I've seen that on lots of, lots of um, tests. So I'm going to go through this a little quicker than the previous one. So we've got a function that's defined in the following way. It's periodic with period 2 pi. Let's draw the function, OK? So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to draw the function on the interval minus pi to pi first, and then I'll take that and copy and paste it. So Okay, here's my function on the interval minus pi to pi. So let's copy it and paste it. Copy it and paste it. And I'll just, I'll just draw it on the interval um, uh, minus 3 pi to 3 pi. Okay, so... Okay, I'll just continue this over here. Okay. Now, not a very good drawing, but hopefully you can get the idea. The question is, is this function odd, even, or neither? Is it odd, even, or neither? It's, n it's neither even nor odd. Okay, so this is slightly annoying because we can't, when we want to calculate our Fourier coefficients, we can't just, you know, use the odd, even simplification. Can anyone suggest how we might make it, how we might make it, um... oh, hang on, I think I've, yes. Yes, now you're talking. Yes, absolutely. Brilliant. Is that how you did it? No, or you, you're just looking at it now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, one way is to move everything down half a unit. Then it will be an odd function. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be a bit sneaky, and this is another good time-saving technique. I'm going to move the whole curve down half a unit. I'm going to calculate the Fourier coefficients for that and the Fourier series, and then I'm just going to add one half to the series that I calculate, because I'll shift the series back up then. Okay? Cool. Very cool. So, our F is neither even nor odd. We shift it down. the y-axis, one-half units to form an odd function. Okay, so we're going to consider a new function, g, that is basically just this function shifted down half a unit and the same periodicity. So. It's going to be a half and minus a half. Okay. 
Now, the best, this is the best thing. If I want to calculate the Fourier coefficients for my g, and g is an odd function, a naught zero, a n to zero. That's it. That's all I have to do. Okay? Alright, so let's A naught is zero. All the ANs are zero as well. Since G is odd. And again, since G is odd is odd, the B sub Ns are just twice. Um, twice the the interval, the integral from this formula. Again, pi, uh, big L's pi here. Okay. Now, if I'm integrating from zero to pi, what is the value of my function g on that interval? Well, it's a half. It's not negative a half. It's a half. So this is what I'm going to get. So now all I need to do is calculate this. Obviously, the two, the two is going to cancel. So, if I integrate sine nx, I'm going to get something like cosine nx. But then I have to adjust for that, that n, so I get this. So now if I substitute in, well, when I sub in um, pi, I'm going to get cos n pi. And when I sub in 0, I'm just going to get cos of 0, which is 1. Now, similar to the previous, I can just simplify my cosine n pi. Now, what will this simplify down to? We can go some, a step further and simplify this even more. If n's even, Minus 1 to the n is going to be positive 1. So I'm going to get positive 1 minus 1. If n's odd, well, this thing in the big brackets is going to be minus 2. So when I multiply through with here, I'll get 2 on n pi. So I've got a, a sort of a strange setup for my B sub ends here, but it's actually going gonna, it's, it's gonna to help us out, so don't worry. Now, let's write out the Fourier series for my shifted function G. I've shifted it a half unit. What I'll do is once I have my Fourier series for G, I'll add a half to the, the Fourier series, so that'll put it back in the right place. So my Fourier series for G, essentially I just... Go up here. I know my a naught zero. I know my a n's are zero, and my b n's. I'll just put that, put that in as we go. Now I'm only going to sum over the odd values of n here. Why am I doing that? Well, because for all the for all the even values of n, I'm just adding up zero, 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 zero. So that's you, you're not contributing anything. Now you may not want to sum over the odd values of n, you may want to put it in a more standard manner. So let's replace n with 2k minus 1. Now, if k is, say, a natural number, 2k minus 1 is always odd. So that's the, that's the idea. So we're going to sum over k equals 1, 2, 3, etc. And replace n in, in our sum and with 2k minus 1. Okay. Now we're almost done. We've got our Fourier series for g. Let's just add one half to it. 
and we will get our Fourier series for our original unshifted function. Uh, so I'll put the two on pi out the front. Oh, okay. With these kinds of problems, you always want to see if you can simplify the calculations. As long as you write down, oh, well, I've got an odd function or an even function or something like that in your exam, I don't think you'll be penalised, okay? I mean, I'll, I'll certainly, well, I certainly wouldn't penalise you. I think that's a smart way of doing it. Okay, so that's the first part. To what value does the series converge at, x, at the point x equals 0 and the point x equals 2 pi? Well, let's go and have a look at our graph. At x equals 0, is the, is the fun so this is the graph of f here. Is the function f continuous at x equals 0? Yes or no? No. So by the theorem that I put up before about convergence, at points of discontinuity, the Fourier series converges to the average of these two limits. Okay, so the left-hand limit as we approach 0 is 0. The right-hand limit as we approach 1 from the, from the right is 1. So what's the average of 1 plus 0? A half. Okay? So at the point x equals 0, the Fourier series converges to 1 half. What about at the point x equals 2 pi, which is there? Again, we have a point of discontinuity, so the Fourier series would converge to a half there. Okay? So this is part B now. Oh, oh, hang on. Have we asked? Have they asked us to do that there? To what value does the series converge to? Yes. Okay. Since since f of x is not continuous at x equals zero, we have the Fourier series converging to the average of the left hand and the right hand limit. Okay, so similarly Now part C, sketch the graph of the function to which the Fourier series converges. Okay, so we're not sketching the function now, we're sketching the, uh, the, the original function. We're sketching the function to which the Fourier series converges to. Okay, so it's basically the same graph except you just shift the points. So instead of having up there to be there, move that point up to there, up to one half. So at any point of discontinuity you would sort of shift the points to, to be one half. Okay, so Okay, so here are all our points of continuity. The theorem that I put up before says that points of continuity, the Fourier series and the original function are, they have the same value. 
Okay, it's only at points of discontinuity that you have something a little bit different. So at the point of discontinuity, the value of the Fourier series is just the average of the left-hand and the right-hand limits. Okay, well, why, why is that important? Well, part D asks you to use the value x equals pi on 2 to find a series which converges to pi on 4. Now, Fourier series um, can be used to evaluate the value, the value of an infinite series. Think back to first year. We saw series, we were interested in whether a series converged or diverged. Right? We had all these tests. Now, Fourier series actually can give us the opportunity to find the value of an infinite series. And this is hugely difficult otherwise. Okay, so let's have a look at D. Let's have a look at our original function. Let's say x equals pi on 2, which is here. What's the value of our original function x equals pi on 2? It's 1. And in particular, the function's continuous at x equals pi on 2. So f of pi on 2 is just 1. And because we have continuity, we know that the value of the Fourier series at pi on 2 is equal to the value of the function at pi on 2. So, what I'm going to do is go back to my Fourier series, plug in x equals pi on 2, which is, so it'll just be this, and set the whole thing equal to positive 1. Then I'm going to simplify. Okay. So now I'm, run I'm running out of time now, so I'm just going to quickly finish this off. I can simplify sine of an odd multiple of pi on 2. It's actually going to be the following. And I'll, I'll get you to, to verify this or ask yourself why it's true. I can replace sine of this with this. So all I need to do now is take the half to the other side, multiply through by pi on 2. The right hand side is going to give us pi on 4. So it looks like I've got my series. But what's this left hand side? Well, let's write out some of the terms. Well, the first term is going to be 1. The second term is going to be minus 1 third, plus 1 fifth, minus 1 seventh, plus 1 ninth etc. This is a special series. Anybody recognize it? It's an alternating series and it's attributed in some parts of the world, world to James Gregory who was a, an astronomer and a mathematician. So this now shows you how you can use Fourier series to get the value of infinite series, which is very, very, very difficult. Very difficult.